Hey you guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back. If you guys are new, I'm a nurse that's here for all your science, back, skincare reviews. And today's going to be an exciting one because we're going to talk about facial oils. I know, probably to a lay person that doesn't sound very exciting, but those of you that are skincare enthusiasts like I am, I love a facial oil. And whether or not you're oily, because I know those with oily skin types, you know, they're questioning whether or not they should use, use a facial oil. Is it going to help increase their oil production? Is there ones that are better for their skin than others? And then if you're like me, if you have dry skin, I love a facial oil. I feel like they make such a difference in the softness and the plumpness of my skin. Just my overall, like, glowiness and my complexion. But I've tried so many different types over such a long period of time I was really trying to narrow down what qualities of each oil I liked better than others So I did a little experiment over probably at least a six month period I took some notes in my phone comparing these different oils I tested high-end versus low-end different types of oils and I came out of this with two favorite oils one high-end one low-end and I realized that there's three things that I look for in a facial oil how easily they spread how quickly they absorb and if they're gonna break me out the results were pretty surprising to me we'll talk about that in the end when I talk about my favorite oils but we have a lot to discuss today we'll talk about these different oils what their benefits are touted as and we'll talk about my favorites and least favorites so we'll go ahead and get right into it. so there's always been a ton of buzz around facial oils you can find them in practically every moisturizer um, but now now people are starting to apply them as usually the end of their skincare routine that's how I like to apply them after my moisturizer especially if I'm suffering with a dry patch I just like the extra occlusiveness it gives my skin and the results in the morning are just extra softness my skin feels more smooth more hydrated looking and more plump the oils play a big role in skincare basically because they are supposed to mimic the way our skin barrier performs we have basically this like brick outer wall of fat molecules or lipids that are made up of 50 percent ceramides 25 percent cholesterol and 15 percent fatty acids and because these plant oils do have these free fatty acids that are also present in our skin like linoleic acid oleic acid their chemical composition is supposed to mimic our skin and supposedly supposed to be easily utilized by our skin now this is contradicted by a lot of scientific studies out there I'm gonna refer you guys down below I'm gonna have a ton of links to research articles also there's a really good literature review that compares different plant oils and what their chemical compositions are and Angie you guys know Angie from hot and flashy did an amazing literature review so I'm not gonna review everything she already talked about but basically the gist of all the research your skin is made up of these naturally present fatty acids but it's a very small percentage and they don't exactly mimic the composition of these plant oils. And as a matter of fact, a lot of these plant oils tout the fact that they have, you know, 60% linoleic acid that can be great for repairing the skin's barrier. However, that 60% is only a portion of the free fatty acid component. So you're really not getting as much fatty acid as you think from these plant oils. However, their benefits are pretty promising. Some oils have been shown to help in healing wounds, to help prevent transepidermal water loss, also to help produce ceramides, which is a lipid component of our skin to help strengthen our skin's barrier. So there are some promising studies, but they're not exactly going to mimic your skin's chemical composition like the fact like how they all tap that they do and also I feel like if the studies were that great we would be utilizing them in hospital environments I've talked about this before but probably the number one topical agent that we use in the hospital is petroleum or mineral oil petroleum and min mineral oil are made from petrolatum which is basically a crude oil and we use them for a couple different reasons first of all they're cheap <laughs> but they also have a long shelf life but the main reason is there's nothing like the occlusiveness of petroleum it's like the number one product that's recommended by dermatologists also our wound care specialists in the hospital and we use all of these different like wound barriers and most of them are made by silicone so there you go you got silicone and petroleum mineral oil there's nothing like the occlusiveness that these are going to provide so essentially we just don't have the remarkable data behind these plant oils but there are some promising studies and you guys have heard me say if there's like a promising studies i have some some faith in um, my skincare products and of course the results will speak for themselves and like i said after incorporating different oils into my skincare routine i've noticed a difference in the softness and my overall just glow in my skin i love a facial oil and i would never be without one but just 
just don't let all these extra benefits steer you in the wrong direction. You're not going to get brightening from a facial oil. That's another point too. A lot of these companies tout the fact that they have antioxidants in their oils. Essentially after these oils are processed, a lot of these antioxidants are broken down. The oil stays more pure when they use this cold press extraction method. So look out for that when you are buying oils, but don't count on getting any wrinkle fighting from the vitamin A or brightening from the vitamin C. They're just way too low in the oil and they're not even probably stable enough in the oil to actually have that result in your skin. But you can always count on a facial oil to hopefully strengthen your skin's barrier, may even help to retain some moisture without having to deal with that thick layer of petroleum on your skin. You're gonna get that occlusiveness, but you're still gonna get the absorption of these plant oils as well to ultimately plump out your skin, smooth your skin surface, and to help ultimately just soften the skin and to make your skin look brighter because you're retaining some more moisture from these oils, or essentially the occlusiveness of these oils is gonna to help to retain that moisture. All right, so let's talk about marula oil first. So marula oil is from the fruit of the marula tree. It actually has a high component of oleic acid, 73% and then we have 15% of palmitic acid which is actually a saturated fat so you're gonna get some more occlusiveness with this and then also linoleic comes in at 9% and I did notice that this is definitely a richer oil but it's still a quick absorbing oil which is why I like it so much and these oils that are higher in oleic acid may be better for dry skin folks because of the fact that oleic acid may provide a little bit more occlusiveness to the skin although there's some evidence that it may also disrupt the skin's barrier but the great thing about marula oil is the fact that it's so rich and lush but yet it absorbs pretty quickly into the skin and it gives those like softening benefits pretty easily i feel like when i started using this i noticed those those soft glowing results within like a few days if not the next day after using this oil but because this is high in oleic acid it also has that saturated palmetic fat it may be a little bit more occlusive and pore clogging on the skin and there was also an interesting study that showed that acne sufferers actually have a higher oleic acid free fatty acid component in their skin so the idea is that you know using less oleic acid in your oils will help to balance out your skin there's not a lot of proven data on this but the potential is there so I thought that was interesting now after testing the two between the drunk elephant oil and also the ordinaries I found that the drunk elephant definitely feels a little bit more like lush. It feels high-end. And one thing that's interesting about Drunk Elephant's Marula Oil is the fact that they have a, a patented extraction process. I actually reached out to the brand. I reached out to three brands for this video. I really wanted to know, are their oils essentially the same as the oils from The Ordinary? Do they get them from the same supplier? But rarely does a brand disclose this information. And essentially I got that same answer when I reached out to each of these brands, but it was cool to know that Drunk Elephant does have this patented extraction process. So I'll read you this email that Drunk Elephant sent me back. And I wanted to point out too, they don't know that I have a skincare channel, so they didn't give me any extra treatment. I did talk about that in my Drunk Elephant serum review that I recently did. I know they're getting a lot of flack for their customer service, but let me let me read you guys what they said. Armor Royal Oil is harvested by grinding and raw cold pressing the kernels of the South African Marula fruit all by hand. From that point, Drunk Elephant uses a proprietary extraction process and six-stage filtration process resulting in the purest and most concentrated form of the oil and then they go on to say that their marula oil is more stable now it's one thing to point out that any oil really that's high in oleic acid is going to be more stable even with that saturated fatty acid like steric acids or palmitic acids are really stable because of the fact that they're saturated oils. Think of a uh, coconut oil for example. It's solid at room temperature and you can keep coconut oil for like years. I know I still have my one from Trader Joe's from like three years back. So these types of oils are very stable. So I'm sure yes the extraction process definitely helps the stability but those contain more of these saturated oils also with a higher oleic acid component are ultimately going to be more stable regardless but comparing the ordinary with drunk elephant i really didn't notice that much different it was more so in the application i felt like drunk elephants felt a little bit more like lush and rich it felt higher end initially and it absorbed a little quicker the ordinaries feels a little thinner it does spread really easily but i think that's because of the thinness of this oil but i still got those softening skin results ultimately i think the next day my skin looked just as soft just as glowy and just as hydrated and moisturized 
So I really didn't notice a big difference between the two, but if you like like the feel and if that quicker absorption factor is more important to you, then maybe go for the Ordinaries. But I would say within like a half hour, the Ordinaries did absorb into the skin. It just takes a little bit. So it depends on your preference, but because of the results, I'll continue to buy the Marula oil from the Ordinary. So now let's talk about Argon Oil. I have Josie Marin's Pure Argon Oil here compared with the Cold Press Argon Oil from the Ordinaries. So Argon is native to the country of Morocco. It comes from the kernel of the argon fruit and it's pretty balanced in the fatty acid components. So there's 38 to 50 percent oleic acid and we have 28 to 38 percent linoleic acid. Palmitic acid we have 10 to 18 percent. So essentially this could be for oily or dry skin. I know I've heard a lot of oily skinned folks say it has broken them out. Neither of these did break me out. And I should just go ahead and say so I'm not repeating myself each time. None of these oils ended up breaking me out. I think I'm just in an extra dry phase of my skin. Being pregnant like I feel like the moisture is like sucked out of my skin right now but again feel free to leave your experiences down below now the cool thing about argon oil is the fact that it is highly contained with vitamin e as a matter of fact it has twice the amount of vitamin e than olive oil so with that vitamin e you're going to have a more stable oil because of that antioxidant property and also because of the vitamin e you may even have more moisturizing capabilities of this oil and argon oil is also known for its ceramide synthesis also known for its anti-inflammatory properties and it's widely known for being great for the hair shaft as well and now comparing these two essentially it was the same result as the drunk elephant as far as I felt like the argon oil from Josie Marin was a little bit more rich it absorbed a little bit more quickly and I just felt like this was so nourishing on the skin my skin was so soft so quickly the ordinaries sat on the skin a little bit longer um, but again this did spread really easily and it did give me ultimately the same results now I reached out to Josie Marin just to ask about their sourcing and their response to me so Josie Marin was one of the very first to champion the natural potency of pure oils our supremely sourced 100% pure argon oil is extraordinarily potent and effective used in every single Josie Marin product it helps hydrate nourish blah 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 so it goes on and on I essentially just wanted to know do you get it from the same place as the ordinary or not <laughs> none of these brands really answered that question but they did say that it's only grown in a protected region in southwestern Morocco and that the argon nut is cultivated and nurtured with extra TLC whatever that provides providing the essential nutrients essential nourishment our skin needs to sustain a healthy beautiful glow so I, again, they didn't really answer my question about sourcing, um, but they did say it's from like a protected region. And I don't know, I did feel like this felt a little bit more rich, but again, I got those same glowing, softened skin results. All right, now let's talk about one of my favorite oils, squalene. So squalene is actually the saturated portion of the emollient oil that's naturally present in our skin called squalene. Squalene actually used to be derived from shark livers, but now we can get it from plant sources such as olives. And there's some amazing squalene oils that are very quick absorbing on the skin. They have a really smooth, silky texture, but they are very occlusive. So some say they're not great for acne prone skin. And because squalene is a saturated oil it's less prone to breaking down than the naturally present squalene so these have a great shelf life they're really silky on the skin and I, I really love how quick absorbing they are and I've always loved the one by timeless this has a very light texture I would say if comparing the three of these I would say this is the lightest but it takes the longest to absorb. Um, next is the Ordinary Squalene, and then I would say the quickest absorbing is Biosense of Squalene. And just like Josie Marin and Drunk Elephant, I did reach out to Biosense to see where they source their squalene, and they did not answer me. <laughs> I saw that they read my DM, but there was no response back. So I don't know what that's about, but I do have to say I really, really love this oil this makes my skin so soft it feels extra nourishing I don't know if it's the fact that it, it absorbs so quickly but oh my gosh my skin feels so plump and hydrated after using this like I'm talking baby soft skin I also noticed that if I use an extra strong exfoliator this does have like a calming effect on my skin too it seems to soothe redness and inflammation it's an all-around great oil I really love this and the price is great too so there's 3.38 
28 fluid ounces and it's uh, $29 on Sephora's website. So when you're breaking it down per ounce, this is actually only $8 and 50 cents. So you're actually getting a big bang for your buck here with this product. So this has been one of my favorites and the ordinaries, like I said, is pretty quick absorbing. It has a little bit more slip to it. It does feel a little, little thinner. And if I'm comparing the packaging, I do like the buy sense because you get the pump from the buy sense. The ordinaries droppers, I mean, they're great, they're simple. It's great that they have this dark UV protected packaging, but the oil drops out, you know, as soon as you lift up the dropper. So you have to be like quick with your application. But I do like this. I feel like I get pretty much the same softness. I just like how quick this absorbs. And I don't know, there is something, I do feel like this feels a little bit more nourishing on my skin. And there's just something about how like velvety and smooth my skin feels after using this. There's something extra to this. It feels a little extra special. And I appreciate the price point being that it's a higher end oil from Sephora. So I did really like this. Um, and the Timeless one is a great option as well. It just takes a little longer to absorb but it somehow feels a little lighter on initial application so this one's great as you can see I I fly through this so yeah I love I love squalene oil and now rosehip oil is another big standout for me rosehip oil is traditionally known to be great for acne prone skin we know there's high components of barrier strengthening fatty acids like 44% linoleic acid, we have 34% linolenic acid, and oleic acid comes in at 14%. So you're getting more of those like breathable fatty acids in here. Um, rosehip oil definitely feels a little lighter to me, but there's something about, first of all, it does absorb quickly, and it's almost like you can visibly see those reparative effects. So I tested all these oils out on my um, ankles and my calves because <laughs> they've been so dry, especially in the winter time I have those like sc visible scales in my skin and the next day after using rosehip oil you can see just the smoothness and how those cells are truly softened there's just no doubting the skin repairing benefits of rosehip seed oil and I do really love the one from the ordinaries I was really impressed by how silky this feels and how quickly this one is absorbed into the skin it spreads over the skin really nicely and it has that like lush high-end feeling texture this is the one that felt the most high-end to me it just feels so just it's pulled into the skin really quickly and it, you just feel your skin being plumped up it's a beautiful oil and like I said rosehip oil is highly known for the presence of vitamin A although that presence of vitamin A is very small it's, it's interesting depending on the extraction type like I also talked about the cold press method definitely maintains the purity of that vitamin A and I all I saw this study this I thought this was very interesting the oil coming from cold pressing contains seven times more tretinoin 0.357 ml per liter to be exact than the oil coming from the organic solvent extraction so there you go cold press you might be getting more of those vitamin a benefits but again the vitamin a component in here is so so tiny if you're looking for the collagen building benefits the last in production wrinkle fighting go for the true retinoids out there. This isn't really gonna do much for that, but if anything, there are some great studies to show the skin repairing benefits to this. Great for acne prone skin. It's really light, but quick absorbing. I really do love rosehip seed oil. I highly prefer this one over this Pixie Rose Oil Blend. Now this one fools you because they call it a rose oil blend, um, but the first ingredient in here is sweet almond oil, and the concentration of almond oil isn't even listed, so who knows, you could be getting like 95% almond oil. There's also fragrant oils in here as well, like geranium um, and orange peel oil. So not the best if you want to use an oil to calm your skin to soothe inflammation. And like I said, the biggest thing with this, this really sat on my skin. It, this takes forever to absorb. <laughs> so I was not a big fan of the Pixie Rose Oil Blend. I know this isn't a super pricey oil, but I don't know, for $24 for only one ounce, like essentially three times the price of some of these ordinary oils and you're not even getting the pure rosehip seed oil so if you're looking for a good rosehip seed oil i would highly recommend the one from the ordinary now next up let's talk about jojoba oil jojoba oil is found in so many different skincare products because of its stability it's very high in oleic acid although the exact percentages of fatty acid 
it, it's very hard to narrow down because of the source of the jojoba oil. So depending on how it's extracted, where it comes from, the fatty acid components can vary greatly. And they're also different than oils in the fact that they're more of, well, jojoba is essentially a wax ester. And wax esters actually make up 25 to 30% of the sebum, the oil in our skin, which is why they say jojoba oil is most identical to human skin when comparing all the other oils. And jojoba is also known for its non-greasy, lightweight feel. It's often used mixed with other different oils. And I actually don't have a pure jojoba oil in my collection, but I do have these two mixed oils that have a high component of jojoba in here. Do you guys see how, I don't know if you guys are noticing how hard it is for me to pronounce jojoba. I know you guys have corrected me many times on my pronunciation. <laughs> Hopefully I'm getting it right this time. But these oils, the first one by Stradia is this Fortify oil. This is actually a, mainly a tea oil, but it also has jojoba in here and there's squalene in here as well. It's a really nice mixed oil that has a nice lightweight feel to it. It's pretty quick absorbing. It has a very strong tea smell to it. Like it literally smells like a tea bag, but this is really nice. It really smooths my skin. I actually like this for underneath my eyes. This is the newest oil to my collection. So I've really only been using this on and off for about like a month to two months. Um, but I can say that it's lightweight. It's not heavy at all. I haven't noticed any breakouts from this. So I really like this fortify oil. The smell is pretty strong though. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I think I like this one by Paul's Choice even better. This is their Moisture Renewal Oil Booster. So this has ceramides in here. There's also argon oil. It has a really light, smooth texture. It feels so great on the skin. But I will say it does sit on the skin a little longer than these other oils. But there's so many great ingredients in here. Not only just the jojoba oil, you also have the safflower seed oil, you have the sunflower seed oil, argon oil, as I said. Um, so you're getting a lot of nourishing fatty acids in this oil so i do really like this one as well so some great benefits to jojoba oil it gives great slip to a product it's really nourishing but again depending on where the jojoba oil is sourced it may be more like poor clogging depending on like what brand you're getting it from but again that's kind of hard to decipher you just kind of have to experiment unfortunately i'll source um, more information especially about jojoba oil there are so many different studies of the components of jojoba regarding its fatty acid component and all that so i'll put that down below but i do really like how jojoba oil performs and i'm liking this one by paula's choice all right, and last but not least let's talk about sea buckthorn fruit oil i don't have a high-end oil of this to compare the ordinaries with but um we'll talk about this regardless but sea buckthorn oil is becoming popular it started as more of an herbal supp supplement it's known to be great for cardiovascular health and immune support it doesn't however have a lot of studies to back up its skin benefits there was one study to show that omega-7 may help inhibit the melanin process production in our skin it inhibits certain enzymes that produce the melanin in our skin so that's one promising study, but we really don't have a ton to back up the skin benefits with sea buckthorn seed oil. There is also linoleic acid in here, oleic acid, so you may get that occlusiveness. Um, you know, it may help to retain some moisture in the skin. It does have the phospholipids in here. It has the natural sterols that helps with, you know, restoring our skin's barrier. So there's some good things in here, but... I don't know, as compared to the other oils, I like the evidence with the other oils a little bit more than sea buckthorn. And when it comes to the application, this has to be my least favorite out of these. This does absorb pretty quickly, but I cannot get past the color and the staining that this leaves on my skin. It leaves like a dark yellow pigment to the skin. It comes out, as you can see, like a dark cherry color on the skin. It still looks pretty pretty dark, pretty scary. And then when you rub it in, it just stains the skin. And that staining is not temporary. It does dissipate a little bit, but the next day my skin, you know, the one side where I applied the sea buckthorn was definitely more yellow than the other side. It also stained my sheets, which I was not a fan of. I'm not one to buy high-end sheets. They're, they're probably sheets from home goods that cost $15, but still, <laughs> they stained my sheets. And I, so yeah, it's oh my, like, look at that. I just don't think the benefits outweigh not really risks, but the um, negative side effects that this gives the skin. So yeah, this is probably my least favorite. Oh gosh, now I'm going to have yellow skin all day. I got to wash this off. A no-go for sea buckthorn for me. Um, I do really like the Stradia Liquid Gold. That has a little bit of sea buckthorn seed oil in it, but 
I don't really get that yellowness to my skin maybe a little bit but it's not it's not terrible um but i do really like how that like smooths out the skin and repairs the skin but yes yeah, sea buckthorn by itself <laughs> i just don't want to walk around looking like an alien like i draw the line there so no go for me with the sea buckthorn seed oil um and that kind of that concludes this video I'll, we'll get into my final thoughts here so as far as the benefits from all these oils go I essentially saw the same result. I saw the softness of my skin. I see like that velvety feel, that plumpness of my skin, but I never saw any brightening with one oil versus another oil. Again, the main things I look with facial oils are the absorbency, how quick they absorb, if they break me out, which none of these actually did break me out, but again, my skin is extra dry right now, um, and how quickly they spread. And looking at those factors, I feel like my favorite has to go to the Biosense 100% squalene oil this is so quick absorbing and it, it spreads so nicely and it makes my skin so soft and glowy can't get enough of this and the price is great for a high-end oil you're getting essentially eight dollars and fifty cents per ounce so great buy here and then another one that's going to be a staple in my routine is the ordinary's 100 percent cold pressed argon oil I don't know why I had this thing against argon oil for the longest time. I think because it was so hyped up, I just feel like it was everywhere. I'm like, is it really worth the hype? But there is something about how nourishing argon oil is. It just feels so rich on the skin and it really does have great benefits for your hair as well. And this is just as good as the higher end argon oils in my opinion. It absorbed really quickly and it feels so rich on the skin. That's what I, I really liked about it. So the Ordinary's Argon will be a staple. And then getting to my least favorites, we just talked about the sea buckthorn oil <laughs> god um but another least favorite was the pixies rose oil blend this sat on my skin it took forever to absorb and I really look for a quick absorbing oil. I don't want them to sit on my face at night. I usually do my skincare routine right before bed. And this mama is tired at night. Like I want to, when I hit my pillow, I want to go to sleep. Um, so yeah, this it just, I don't like the fact that it sat on my skin. And also the fact that it had these fragrant oils in here, not necessary. So this is probably my least favorite. So I came out of this with two favorite oils. I don't think it's worth incorporating a ton of different oils into your skincare routine because of the benefits. I just think you have to find one that your skin gets along with and stick with it and you're gonna see those glowing results those skin strengthening results I really notice an improvement in the hydration levels of my skin whether that be from the occlusiveness of these oils or just from those maybe the linoleic acid component the fact that it really is like repairing my skin to keep that hydration in but yeah I I'm so excited that I found some two new favorites. So let me know down below your favorites. Let me know your skin type, what oils you've got along with, what are just complete no-goes for you. I love to hear from you guys. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. <laughs> I'm laughing at my alien hands. Oh my God. It's